All right, good morning, everyone. Today is Thursday, March 4th, 2021, and we have a fair amount of news to cover today, which is interesting, and um, it's kind of good because the, the world news is uh, is kind of scattered in the sense that it's not focused on one or two things. There actually is a little more to report on, but I mean, compared to yesterday. But the first thing I want to start off with is a little bit of an opinion, but it has to do with the minimum wage and the COVID relief means testing. Now, I want to make this very clear because it has to do with, uh, you know, the COVID stimulus and all that. I'm a Canadian. I'm not an American. I want to make that clear. I did my research by looking at both, uh, you know, self-proclaimed center um center left, center right, a little bit farther to the right, a little bit farther to to the left, articles, news clips, you name it. Now, from my understanding, if I'm wrong, for those on YouTube, please correct me in the uh, in the comments. From my understanding, as of yesterday, the COVID means testing dropped from 100 grand to 80 grand, meaning that anyone who was making 100 grand a year or less was eligible for not even the $2000 checks, the $1400 check or Fourteen or sixteen hundred dollar checks, if I'm mistaken, it lowered now. But that's not even the point. Now it suddenly dropped to eighty thousand. So anyone making eighty thousand or less gets this money. Okay, and I want to bring this up because I don't know exactly how the means testing in that regard, why and how it got lowered. My point here is this: people say, "Oh well, why is Biden making excuses about the parliamentarian? Why doesn't he just executive order the stimulus and the minimum wage thing?" Right, which he can, from my understanding of the American system and the law, he can. Also, Kamala Harris can overrule this, this parliamentarian. My problem is Jen Psaki, the, the, the uh, press secretary, which also both sides are now calling Jen a psyopy because she kind of, um, she's a psyop in the sense that like she fumbles around with answering questions. Um, when both sides are calling her that, you know it's bad. But anyways, the, the point I'm, what I'm trying to make here is that How come all these years, and maybe it's just me being a Canadian, but those listening right now that are American, how come all these years I've never heard anything about the parliamentarian? Don't get me wrong, I've heard the word and the position used before, but not like this. Not like the parliamentarian is, you know, preventing the president from allowing the $15 minimum wage to go through. Because what happened here was Jen Psaki said last weekend, she goes, well, the president highly respects, uh, you know, the role of the parliamentarian. Look, The VP can overrule the parliamentarian, and not only that, the parliamentarian, for the most part nowadays, from my understanding and research, is mainly a symbolic position. So what I'm trying to say here is this. I'm not trying to compare Biden to Trump. I'm saying we got to be consistent in the sense that people said, you know, Trump's plan was no good and all that, and we can debate that, but that's fine. Let's put that to the side. That's not for me to say. I'm here to report this to you guys. The problem I have here is the consistency. If Biden really wanted to put in the $15 minimum wage... I get it. The whole thing is, well, if the Senate passes it, then I don't have to executive order it because if I'm Biden and I executive order it, it could be reversed uh, two to four years from now. And you know what? What I say to that, in my humble opinion, if it is reversed, the $15 minimum wage two to four years from now, then so what? Then it gets reversed. But people need money now. Right. And now I'm not talking I'm not saying that I'm all for the $15 minimum wage. Right, because I understand that it affects small business owners as well. My point here is not about the minimum wage or the COVID means testing standards being lowered compared to even Trump's administration, who actually sent out money based on means testing that was higher than Biden's. My point here is this when they say something, they got to be consistent. But the reason why they're not, and the reason why, in my opinion, there's all this excuse for parliamentarian this, parliamentarian that, is not because I'm trying to shit on Joe Biden or the Democrats. No, it's because what I've seen, even before Trump, with Obama, with Bush, with Clinton, the Democrats need the Republicans to push back on certain things because it helps the corporate donors. And the corporate donors donate to both sides, the Democrats and the Republicans. So infighting is actually good because then either side doesn't get anything done. And therefore, individually, these politicians at an individual level keep receiving money from the corporate donors and then everyone's happy. And it just looks like optically and aesthetically to the, to the American people that you're fighting.
right, that you're fighting for. Now, I want to say there are actual politicians who actually fight for things and get things done. I'm not trying to say this about all of them. I'm, I would honestly say this is the majority of them. Now, I could be totally wrong here. If I'm wrong about anything, I'm very sorry for spreading false information. Please correct me in the comments. But from what I've seen in the last 24 hours, CNN hosts, MSNBC, New York Times, even Fox News hosts are having people from the White House on saying, why is the means testing being lowered? Right. And now, yes, there are issues about, you know, the, the minimum wage, the Democrats and the Republicans have problems with that. But the point is this. What I'm trying to say is, do you notice when we take a big step back how much of a show this is? Right. And I say that because look, for example, at a few months ago, after Kamala was the uh, uh, vice president elect before she got sworn in, she's giving props and high fiving Lindsey Graham on the Senate floor. It's a show. You know what I mean? A lot of it's a show. And I'm not trying to shit on Biden. I mean, I'm not trying to shit on Trump either. What I'm trying to say here is the consistency. Now, the argument is, Dave, Biden's only been in there for a handful of weeks or months. Give him a chance. I get that. But you can't. um, In my right state of mind, uh, the way I see it is you cannot enforce or talk so highly about all the changes you're going to make when you're running and then not do it when you get in. Now, I get it all the time realistically you can't pursue every promise you made on the campaign i get it but these are not the small promises he made these are the big ones right so look i'll give biden the benefit of the doubt i'll be fair and consistent give him more time fine but you know what this is i'm sorry if i kind of pushed my opinion onto you guys it's just i don't republican or democrat guys both sides consistent i don't see why nothing's happening you know what I mean? And if I'm missing something, please do correct me in the comments because I, I, I would appreciate that. I have no problem admitting if I got something wrong, but I, I think I'm fairly accurate on this. But anyways, the next thing is that obesity has been found to fuel vastly higher death tolls if contracting COVID. I mean, of course, just like with anything in life, if you're unhealthy, then gen- I mean, it's normal for everyone to be a little bit unhealthy in their own way. That's normal. Nobody's a perfect human being physically. I mean, maybe there are a couple out there in terms of just genetics, but I don't, I don't expect people to be perfect. But, you know, I mean, if you're extremely overweight, then I can understand that. Then I can fully, uh, I can fully understand why this would be the case. The next thing is that New York is testing vaccine passports in certain areas of the city and things like this. Look, we know this has been coming. We can't deny it. The question becomes, how much does this extend to a grand scale? Now, if it becomes like, for example, certain airlines require it, other airlines don't, I guess that could be considered fair because there are a lot of people that want the vaccine passports. There are a lot that don't. Uh, if you guys want to know my opinion, I don't. Um, for many different reasons. I think it, no matter how bad this virus gets, I think ultimately, uh, you know, assuming it's real and all that, I think ultimately... Um, I just don't want to have to be able to have to take a test and or have to have sorry, not a test have gotten the vaccine just to fly. You know what I mean? But anyways, we'll see what happens there. The next thing is that White House, uh, the White House cut the video feed after Joe Biden started taking questions from some reporters. Look, you could, I'll be totally consistent and honest with you guys. The right is pushing this. It's a great narrative for them. It really is. It does make you question why they cut the feed. A lot of times Biden doesn't take questions, which is still questionable. I mean, let's be realistic here. He's been through a brain aneurysm and I'm not trying to defend him, but I mean, when you go through, uh, I think one or two brain aneurysms, that's quite like, that's not easy on top of all the things he's been through in his life as do other people. Right. And so the whole thing is if he really, if you're defending him, Dave, then he shouldn't be president. And you know what? To a large extent, I agree because we have to play devil's advocate. We got to look at both sides here. Right. The next thing is that the Chris Cuomo's excuse about his brother was a bunch of BS. I might have covered this yesterday, but I really thought about it after I did yesterday's episode. And Chris Cuomo said he he goes, listen, he goes, I'm not stupid. He goes, a lot of people are asking why I don't cover the situation on my brother. He goes, the reason why I don't is because he is my brother, right? So it's journalistic malpractice to, you know, he might be biased and things like that. Of course, he talks to his brother, I'm sure on the phone almost every day, what have you. He did say that CNN is covering it, which to be fair, CNN is. With that being said, though, I have a problem with what Chris Cuomo said there, and I'll tell you why. You know what was also considered journalistic? malpractice when he would have his brother on when his brother was you know considered the god of new york and everyone loved him about a year ago that he, he chris Cuomo was criticized for that i'm not even joking he was criticized for that because of the fact that when he took a step back and we looked at all this we said to ourselves 
are you like you're a journalist? It's not like it's not really appropriate to have your own brother on if you're unless you're going to ask him tough questions. You know what I mean? He'd have his brother on and they'd laugh. Hey, you know, your mom wants you to give her a call. I get it. You're trying to ease the situation, trying to make people laugh during the time of COVID and all that. But look, people can laugh in other ways. You're a journalist. If you So what I'm saying here is if you had your brother on then, that's fine. But have him on now and ask him tough questions now. Right? And if it was the opposite, if he didn't have his brother on then, then it's fine. He's right to say he can't have him on now. But you can't have your brother on when everything's fine and dandy. And then what you can't, and then all of a sudden you don't bring him on when it's, things are not going well. That's a bunch of BS. I don't care Republican or Democrat. That's just my, my perspective. And I think many of you would agree with me. The next thing is that today's session of the House, which is supposed to happen this afternoon, as of the day I'm recording this Thursday, uh, was canceled due to possible physical threats and violence. Look, they still got the guards there. Uh, they're still figuring out what what was you know what happened on the sixth and all that. If there's going to be threats of violence and it's a legit report, then don't have the session. It's as simple as that. I guess, I guess maybe get more, get some more guards or security in there. Could be a, a an intelligence play. I doubt it, but it could be. I could be wrong, but I mean, what else is there to say about that, right? The next thing is that. Merrick Garland, who's the nominee to be attorney general, is being attacked very viciously from the right for a lot of different things, from things that he did in the past. Obama tried to nominate him to be a Supreme Court judge. Mitch McConnell blocked it. Apparently, Merrick Garland's pretty fair in terms of his rulings with a lot of things. I could be wrong, but again, this is just politics. You're going to be attacked. If if you're not... um, if you don't want to be attacked, don't get into any position that's even remotely close to politics. It's as simple as that. The next thing is that a voting rights bill has passed in the House which targets state restrictions. So there's no, there's going to be a much more difficult time to suppress votes or gerrymander or anything like this. The Democrats, because it is a, a Democratic majority in the House. Excuse me. The Democrats are passing it because they're saying the Republicans are gerrymandering and you know voter suppression. I haven't looked into that enough to comment on it, and I'm not trying to dodge that. If the Republicans are suppressing votes, then I'm going to call it like it is after I look into it, right? Um, if they're if they're not, then I guess the bill is uh, pointless. I, I mean, but I can understand if they're trying to maybe set up more voting stations or solidify a digital software in there. The problem I have, though, is that Amazon owns and runs, I think, like 70 to 80 percent of all the voting software in the country, and I get it. I mean, in theory, they're not like it's. It would t- take a lot for Jeff Bezos to get away with rigging it, but I mean that that's been floated before. I'm concerned about any one company owning a, a chunk of the voting machines in any country. To tell you guys the truth, the next thing is that SpaceX rocket uh, exploded eight minutes after it nailed its landing yesterday. I think I saw Elon Musk tweet about it before it took off. Um, look, it's trial and error, right? You're going to have things go very successfully, like in the past couple of years with SpaceX, and then you're going to have things not go as successfully. Now, the one thing that I, I'm kind of hesitant of is, I mean, it exploded eight minutes after it did a perfect landing. So I'd hope that, like, I, I mean, imagine if there's engineers that were walking up to it or something like this within those eight minutes, they'd be dead, right? Assuming the explosion was dramatic. I didn't see the footage. I honestly didn't have the, the time to catch it. But, um... But yeah, I mean, it's trial and error, right? Assuming nobody got hurt, it's you learn from it, and then we keep going. It's as simple as that. And I'm sure Elon knows that. The next thing is that a, a Hong Kong court denied bail to 32 pro-democracy activists. Again, just like in Russia, they don't care. It's as simple as that. So I'm going to be honest with you guys. I mean, if anyone heads over to China or Russia or anything like this, and you decide to do some uh, protesting, get ready. Because you might not be coming back for quite some time, just to put it bluntly. The next thing is that Meghan Markle is accusing the palace, in other words, the queen and the royal family, of perpetuating falsehoods. And she low-key implied that she didn't care if she suffers the same fate as Diana. Look, it's no secret that the royal family doesn't like Meghan Markle. We know that. Now, she's been accused of bullying and things like this. But again, I don't want to waste my time on it because it's just drama. If she ends up dead, then that's something to talk about. And I'm not trying to say that in a bad way. I'm just saying that if she ends up suffering very sadly the same fate that Di- Diana did, that a lot of people think, you know, the the especially with the way Diana died, that, you know, MI6 and the Queen had her killed, which personally, in my opinion, I, I really think is the case. I don't put it past the Queen, or I don't put the, the Queen above that. So, 
I mean, then then it's something to discuss because then it's like they're literally getting away with murder in front of everyone's faces, like the world's faces, not just the UK citizens faces. And no one's doing nothing about it. Right. And the final thing is that there are rape allegations um, against Australian politicians all over the place recently. But more specifically, I want to talk about one specific case, which is a uh, an Australian minister by the name of Linda Reynolds. Now, Allegedly, one of her ex-advisors, former advisors, raped one of her ex-aides. And she then called um, Mrs. Reynolds, the uh, the minister, then called the ex-aide who came out and said, the woman who said I was raped by an ex-advisor, called her a lying cow. She now says that she regrets it. Like, regrets calling her a lying cow. Well, sure, because now it's not even the Australian people watching. It's the whole world watching. We're living in a, in a in an era of where, you know, the women are coming out who have been wrongfully raped and all that. And I totally agree with that. The only thing, the issue I have with that, and I know people are hesitant to speak on this because, you know, they're afraid of offending people. But I honestly don't care. Is that... You're going to have, just like with anything in life, you're going to have the bad apples, the ones that come out that are lying or that are fabricating or manipulating a story, right? And that gives a bad name for the other women who are actually telling the truth, right? Now, do I think there are certain instances where women try to over-sensationalize in order to get fame or headlines, you know, the 15 minutes of fame? Absolutely. There always was, there are, and there always will be, but that's like with anything else in life. So we can't simply say there's a lot of guys out there who say, yeah, but you know, Dave, look, these women, they lie. We don't know how many of them are lying. Listen, guys, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I got to side with the woman on this one and um, not necessarily the Me Too movement. I want to make that clear, but I'm, I side with women because let's be totally honest here. Men have, I mean, molested, raped, uh, assaulted, harassed for I don't even want to say years. I would say millennia. Now, granted, this is that's not the biological nature of it. Geraldo Rivera on Fox News tried to argue that. Like, you know, how else is a man supposed to make an advance on a woman? Well, not by raping them. You know, maybe you could start by, I don't know, talking, right? So it's it's that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? I understand there's certain situations that are hard to decipher. You know, is the woman over-exaggerating for attention? Did she really like it when, you know, the guy touched her on her hip or something like this, but now she's saying it for money or this or that, or the guy has become a prominent figure? It's all context, guys. But ultimately, assuming it's a black and white story, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to side with the woman because men are physically more powerful overall right now i know that's a controversial topic and i i didn't cover all the angles because we're kind of running out of time here but again maybe you guys would like to continue this in the comments but again it's contextual it's circumstantial in the sense that i'm not saying okay i believe all the women i'm saying we got to look at it case by case that's ultimately what i'm saying right so that's it for today we'll catch you guys on sunday for the news uh, roundup uh, of what happens later today friday and saturday and we'll catch you guys later on cheers